Have you ever wondered what Jesus' singing voice sounded like? Seriously, stick with me for a moment. If you were standing near to him on Saturday night or Sunday morning, would he be the guy you can hear from two rows over? He was the only perfect human to live, right? But did he ever sing out of tune? Well, maybe these are just the strange things I think about as a musician. However, I think there are a few questions that would be useful to answer for any follower of the way of Jesus. Why do we worship and how do we do it? Of course, before we can answer those questions, we have to talk about what is worship. Oftentimes, in the context of church, the word worship is used to describe the music part of the service. But of course, singing together is just one expression of worship, not really a definition. Here's an explanation of worship that I like from pastor and theologian Warren Wearsby. He says this, Worship is the believer's response of all that he or she is, mind, emotion, will, and body, to all that God is and says and does. Now, I hear you thinking, if that's true, then almost anything can be worship. And in a way, you're right. Jesus said that the Father is seeking people that will worship him in spirit and in truth. So however we're expressing our worship, it must be sincere, from the heart, motivated by our love and gratitude for all God is and all he's done. In addition, the Holy Spirit is integral in our worship. It's the Holy Spirit that awakens our understanding of the beauty, glory, and holiness of God, and that same Spirit that moves us to celebration and thanksgiving. When we worship in truth, we are worshiping the God revealed in the scriptures, and not a God of our own making. In other words, true worship celebrates what we know to be true about God, as imparted to us by the God-inspired words of the Bible. So why is worshiping God crucial in the life of a Jesus follower? It may sound like a simple answer, but consider for a moment humanity's propensity for worship. We are created to ascribe worth. It's just part of who we are. However, where that worship is directed can often be misguided and lead us away from the true worship I described a moment ago. I'll give you a simple example. My house faces west, and my family and I love to watch the sunset. If there's a particularly amazing one, someone from the family will yell into the house to come and check it out, and everybody just scatters from wherever they were doing to come and see it. Now, God created that awesome looking sunset, but it would be very easy with my internal, naturally human desire to worship, to aim that worship in the wrong direction, at the creation of the sunset and not the God who created it. You've probably heard Psalm 19. It says this, The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. The amazing things we get to experience on earth should point us back to our creator. Our response of worship is important because it helps us to center us on our good, gracious, and generous God. Worship is also important because it reminds us of who God is in those times when we feel far from him. When we sing together in corporate worship, the words we're singing about who God is aren't a reminder for him, but a reminder for us. Those truths about God that we declare and celebrate together work into our hearts so that in times of heartache, loss, hurt, sadness, and suffering, we still have a clear picture of our God. It would be very difficult to lead a life following Jesus without worshiping him. True recognition of the generosity of God in giving us all of creation produces a worshipful response in our hearts. Full understanding of the sacrifice made by Jesus on our behalf produces a worshipful response in our hearts. And total awareness of the fullness of God's glory produces a worshipful response in our hearts. Now, you've probably heard the phrase, practice makes perfect. I think a better way to think about the practice of worship is this. Practice makes permanent. What are the habits and practices that will help worship be a permanent part of my life in following Jesus? So let's go back to the definition of worship we talked about earlier. The believer's response of all that he or she is, mind, emotion, will, and body, to all that God is and says and does. So first, how do I respond to God with my mind? By continuing to learn about him, to read his word and see what God says about himself. How do I respond to God with my emotions? Well, God is not expecting us to always be happy and smiley. God wants us to respond with our real emotions. Remember, Jesus said to worship in spirit and truth. God is looking for your genuine response, not what you think he wants to hear. How do I respond to God with my will? Well, this one's simple to say, but hard to do. Surrender it to him. God's will is not always aligned with our own, but we're called to trust his over ours. Finally, how do I respond to God with my body? Well, as a worship leader, you might be able to guess the first thing I'll say. Use your voice. God gave us voices, and one of the best uses for that gift is to use it to respond to him. Whether you're singing or just speaking aloud, using our voices is a powerful way to adore God and declare the true attributes of God. 
Remember, God cares more about your heart and worship than write notes. So don't let your appraisal of your own musical abilities be a hindrance. With that in mind, I want to give you one practical thing that I've found to be helpful as a worship practice. In cultivating the use of our voices as a practice of worship on our own, sometimes we just don't know what words to say. God's gift to us is the book of Psalms. If you open up your Bible right about to the middle, you'll find the book of Psalms. The Psalms are essentially a collection of worship songs and poems written centuries before Jesus lived. In fact, Jesus quoted from the Psalms more than any other Old Testament book, even as he hung dying on the cross. The Psalms range in theme and cover a wide spectrum of human emotions. We can use these same Psalms today as part of our worship practice. My encouragement to you today is to pick a Psalm of praise, or even just part of one. If you don't know what to choose, start with some well-known ones. I'd suggest Psalm 23, Psalm 139, Psalm 95. Check the description section below if you want to refer back to any of those examples. Now, once you've chosen your psalm, first read it silently to yourself. Think about what the author is saying about God and how they're worshiping him in that psalm. Finally, read the psalm again, but read it out loud. Declare it, and if you're feeling brave, sing it. You might feel embarrassed, but just roll with it. Remember, God knows what your voice sounds like. He created it. I think you'll find it's amazing how relevant the words of praise and adoration for our God remain over thousands of years. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button below so more people can discover why and how to worship Jesus.